Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing a very interesting publication from NVIDIA. Now, of course, all companies continue to conduct research in the field that they're operating within. And one of the big things that NVIDIA have been pushing, as you probably know at this point, is hardware-based ray tracing, which is a very, very, very uh, taxing operation for a GPU to perform. Now, of course, modern GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD do have dedicated hardware blocks, we'll discuss those further in just a moment, to help actually calculate how a rays of light will bounce around in a scene. But this brings me to GPU sump warp interleaving. And again, this is a publication which has just appeared from NVIDIA themselves. I'd like to credit 0x22h on Twitter for the, uh, for the discovery excuse me, of this patent. Now, just so that we're up front, this is a very complicated topic and it's actually something I can't really delve ultra deep into in this video because I will be here until like tomorrow uh, kind of going through it all with you guys. However, I will go through the basics and I want to keep this as simple to understand as possible. So it won't be 100% technically accurate, but it will give you some idea of what's happening. Of course, I will also link the original tweet as well as the publication in the video description so if you're technically inclined you can go through it yourself so the first things first and this is really important this is actually a hardware thing so this is not something where they can just release a driver update and like rtx 20 is going to benefit from this that isn't going to happen so this in fact is even specified right off the get-go it says we identify warp interleaving um sub warp interleaving excuse me a primary limitation primary limiters damn i can't speak today for an nvidia turing like architecture and now, if we read the beginning of this, so ray tracing applications have high thread divergence, low warp occupancy, and are limited by memory latency. Now, notice memory latency, not memory bandwidth. That's a very important point. So, for those who don't know, uh, graphics memory such as GDDR6, 6X, and so on and so on, all have higher latency compared to something like DDR4 memory, which you're probably running for, say, a Zen 3 based processor. So this is something that GPUs have been dealing with for a long ass time. This higher latency can be offset via numerous things, for example, cache systems on the GPU itself and running tons of work concurrently. Um, but anyway, we'll get more into that in a moment. In this paper, we present an architectural enhancement called subwarp interleaving. This exploits thread divergence to hide pipeline stalls in divergent sections of low warp occupancy workloads. Subwarp interleaving allows for fine-grained interleaving execution of divergent paths within a warp with the goal of increasing hardware utilization and reducing warp latency. Basically, they claim that this is going to be between about a 6% uptick in performance up to around 20 now that might not sound huge. Let's say you're getting 60 FPS at a game, 6% up to 20%. Eh. Let's say you're getting 10%. Let's just say, you know, nice round figure. That means if you get 60 frames a second, you're now getting around 66, all things being equal. But you have to remember that this is just one aspect of the architecture which will be improved. Now, I don't know whether this is going to be RTX 40 or later. However, if you're regularly watching the channel, you'll know that I have been told, and I've reported multiple times, that RTX 40 onwards have a large improvement in ray tracing performance. I'm going to try and find out whether this is part of that. Um, but, yeah. So, um, again, this is a future architecture, as we've already established. And this is pretty uh, this is pretty complicated stuff. So what essentially Nvidia have done here is um, modified an RTX 20 architecture. I also want to be clear on terminologies here for those who aren't so familiar with Nvidia based GPUs. Basically warp is Nvidia's terminology for a group of instructions. So basically instructions are grouped together and then can be executed. So when it comes to a modern day GPU, 
there's obviously thousands of shaders. Like I recently reviewed the RTX 3050, which is the lowest end RTX GPU um, from NVIDIA. It's of course based on Ampere. And in total, it has 2,560 shaders or CUDA cores, whatever. Although of course, the um, architecture itself has changed quite a bit compared to Turing. Uh, you can check out my review, by the way, if you want to. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. But basically, because a GPUs have thousands of instructions, you can have a lot of different things happening on the GPU at once. And this is very important when it comes to hiding or reducing latencies. Not only can you have a ton of operations running concurrently, but also you can have a single instruction which is issued and then tons of threads can work on that particular operation. Now, if we take a look at the paper and look at figure four versus figure six, you can see what the researchers have essentially done adding the sub warp scheduler in its place. And in indeed, it says sub warp interleaving SM structure. A sub warp scheduler replaces the divergence handling mechanism and uses sub warp sub warp wake up and the selection of logic described in uh, 3b to select a new sub warp so in essence then with this sub warp um, hardware in place what can essentially happen is if there's an operation which has a ton of latency so basically instructions are stored for whatever reason what can happen is that the gpu can switch to a sub warp and from page 10 onwards of the paper, you can see a few example graphs of the performance speed ups that have been gained here. And it will depend upon the operation. Now, again, GPUs are hideously complicated. And ultimately, there's going to be a lot of speed up in general from, you know, moving to from one architecture to another. And obviously, when it comes to things like the GPU calculating bounding volume hierarchy and how rays intersect with a scene and all of this other stuff, it's kind of, you know, I don't want to say it's new territory because obviously NVIDIA have been pushing this since Turing, but it's still one of those things where we have a long way to go because obviously if you look at something like a standard rasterization, it's kind of pretty much established at this point. Like, we, we can do it really well. But the, ultimately speaking, you know, ray tracing is becoming part and parcel now of gaming. And I think that um, we're going to be seeing some really cool stuff going forward. And speaking of cool stuff, let's move over to Intel. A small uh, update or two, actually, for Intel. The first is that Intel's Arc Alchemist has actually well now been pictured we can literally see the die itself and we can also spot that it's uh, running samsung gddr6 memory i want to give credit to kuna on twitter for this particular leak there's not a whole lot to say about this it pretty much matches a leak that i covered just a short while ago for the dg2 graphics memory configuration for mobile we don't know whether this particular SKU is mobile or whether it's going to be a discrete gpu but yeah i mean at this point we kind of know that the configuration for the highest end SKU from uh, dg2 is going to have 512 execution units it's going to have 256 bit memory bus and running at 16 gbps so anyway 512 gigabytes per second um, in memory bandwidth again that has been leaked on the mobile side and it seems to be matching pretty closely to what i've been stating for a while now on desktop and we also covered the rtx 3070 ti performance um uh, metric that the uh that was really clumsily worded but basically an intel arc gpu has also been benchmarked and basically received um the same score as an rtx 3070 ti um so again that also matches what i've leaked a couple of times as well Speaking of interesting things, though, from Intel, there's an XMG Fusion, Fusion, I'm saying it in the Dragon Ball sense here, gaming laptop, as it's actually announced a 2022 roadmap. Now, this is going to be based around a 12th, a 12th generation Intel uh, CPU. Now, naturally, there will be other configurations other than an Intel graphics one, but you can see the roadmap um, which has actually been published by XMG. And basically, end of Q2, early Q3, XMG Fusion with Intel Arc. Now, it is important to realize that this is not confirming that that's the release date of Arc. 
because you know arc could release tomorrow and the product could then release later on right like sometimes they just need longer for design or whatever however um you know regular viewers will know i've said that i've been hearing it's delayed a little bit particularly on the desktop so whether this is actually a sign of when Intel are going to release this, because Intel were being quite, quite vocal that they wanted to release these early, you know, early this year. Now, frankly, I'm not so worried about the release date. I mean, obviously, I would like it to release to tomorrow if possible, but I, I would rather Intel spend a little bit longer and get things right. Um, and it's not just the architecture itself, you know, it's not just how performant the chips are or how how many watts they consume or the temperature or you know failure rate all of that is important but we also need other things to be well working to put, to put a non-finer point on it such as for example we want xdss to be running as it should um we want really stable drivers with crap tons of features and all of those other things which kind of go into it remember as well that games developers uh, need time as well with the architecture to optimize because ultimately this is kind of like a brand new architecture so we kind of saw what happened with amd with zen remember when zen first launched and developers were like really quickly releasing patches trying to get like decent performance now i'm not saying that's going to be the case here with intel as it is a slightly different situation i'm just saying that these are kind of things that do need to be taken into consideration so i'd rather the product be a little bit slower and it's a great product and i do think that intel are going to be very competitive not just in terms of the pricing but i think they're going to have decent availability although honestly in this day and age we'll have to wait and see and i'm going to talk about one last thing in this video because it's already getting a little bit longer than what i anticipated and yes that is what she said um, and this is concerning Vulcan. So Vulcan 1.3 has basically been announced. This is by the Kronos Group itself. Um, I've actually gotten emailed about this on release, but I kind of was like crying as I was trying to finish the RTX 3050 stuff. It was kind of like, yeah, just kind of chaos. But basically, this is an interesting one because they're also outlining their roadmap as well and feature fragmentation. I'll, of course, link their um, blog post in the video description. So I'm going to read this verbatim. As you might expect, Vulkan 1.3 adds a range of features that are broadly implementable across actively supported hardware. In fact, any hardware that actively supports the 1.2 implementation should be capable of supporting 1.3, but that hasn't stopped us from packing in a bunch of interesting features, all of which are non-optional. You will have these features, damn it. You will have them and you will like them. But anyway, uh, being serious for a moment, for example, VK, KHR, dynamic rendering adds a streamlined path to start rendering applications that can't or don't want to use subpasses, don't need to create any ever rendering passes, or frame buffer objects, significantly reducing application complexity. Um, basically, they're also providing a, a roadmap of sorts here as well, which is pretty cool. So I'll read out just the beginning of this. In earlier core revisions of the Vulkan specification, we added a number of optional features to indicate that a particular feature is officially recommended by the working group or is expected to be reliably supported in certain markets. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, Vulcan itself obviously is not something like, I don't know, um, DirectX in that it's platform agnostic and will also work on pretty much a massive number of different hardware, pieces of hardware, operating systems. And honestly, I think Vulcan and the um, Kronos ecosystem is really cool. And ultimately, I will be curious to see how things kind of happen. I think it's fair to say that you shouldn't really think of like DirectX 12 and Vulkan as competing against one another because they both have, how do I say it, somewhat different use cases. And it also depends heavily upon the platform that you're targeting as well. Um, obviously, if you're developing just specifically for Xbox and PC for sake of discussion, Vulcan has less of an interest because, well, you're just targeting towards the Microsoft ecosystem. But if you're also targeting towards 
you know, a plethora of other devices, then it could be a lot more interesting, especially because technically consoles can run Vulkan as well, which is an interesting uh, discussion in and of itself. Actually, recently, well, I say recently, it was a while ago now, I actually uh, interviewed uh, Kronos themselves about what Vulcan 1.2, who says with some trepidation as he's trying to crank his memory. Uh, so yeah, you can check that interview out yourself. It was with Neil Trevitt. And uh, we went into a whole bunch of stuff discussing hardware-based ray tracing and upsampling and tons of cool stuff. So if you are interested in Vulcan or just geeky stuff, you can... Well, um, check it out. I don't know, my, my, yeah, it, it's a thing. With that said, thank you very much for checking out this video. Wow, I couldn't be much clumsy with my words if I tried there, could I? Um, but anyway, thanks very much for checking out this video. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.